Good afternoon. Today we come together to celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In your charity, remember Frank Applin, who died this past week. Please include among your intentions today a special remembrance for the repose of the soul of Cal Palazzari. We ask all those with cell phones to please turn them off or put them on silent mode at this time. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Dady. Our opening hymn can be found in Missalettes, number 210. Come, ye thankful people, come, number 210. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. As we now prepare our hearts to worthily celebrate this blessed liturgy, we pause once again, acknowledging that we are sinners, but we always trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your Son of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the word made flesh that dwelt among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the heart. With the Holy Spirit 
in the glory of God the Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for she, he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, 
so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciple this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taken their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise one brought, brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise one replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. gave an interview to the New York Magazine. And he relates a story that happened to him when he was eight years old. Paul loved his New York Giants baseball team. That's what it was called back in his day when he was eight years old. And he would follow them on the radio and on television. And his favorite player was Willie Mays. Willie Mays, for him, was his hero. And so one day, Paul was lucky enough to go to a baseball game in New York. And he doesn't recall who won, which to me says they probably lost. But after the game... He was sitting in the stands with his family and some friends, and they were talking throughout the course of the stadium emptying out. And they were one of the last ones to leave. And the only gate that was open was the gate in center field. And so the management allowed them to walk across the field to go out the center field exit. 
Well, lo and behold, as they were exiting the gate out of the giant's locker room, walks Willie Mays. And though his family meets Willie Mays at the gate, and Paul says in his very sheepish eight-year-old voice, Mr. Mays, may I have your autograph? And Willie Mays says to Paul, well, sure, do you have a pencil? And Paul did not have a pencil. He looks to his dad, do you have a pencil? And dad says, no, son, I don't have a pencil. Mr. Mays, do you have a pencil? Mr. Mays, Willie says, no, Paul, or no, son, I don't have a pencil. I am so sorry. And Willie Mays walks away, and Paul said he didn't want to cry, but tears started down his cheeks because he wasn't prepared to have an autograph from Willie Mays. And he said from that point onward, wherever he went, he carries a pencil in his pocket just in case that he would have met Willie Mays once again. But he was unprepared. Who would have been prepared? Preparation. That's what today's gospel is reminding us of the importance of being prepared. For we have the story of the ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. Now you need to understand the Jewish tradition of a wedding at that time. The Jewish traditions of weddings was that it was a whole village celebration. The whole village celebrated the marriage of the man and the woman. It was just wasn't a family and friends, it was a village. And after the marriage, after the ceremony was over, the couple, instead of going off into a honeymoon, as most couples of today do, the couples would go home. The couple would go back to their place of residence, either her family or his. Most likely it was her family. And through the course of a week, they would be celebrating the marriage. Villagers would come in and out. There would be food. There'd be wine. There'd be drink. There'd be dancing. And this lasted for a year. Now, before the wedding, what would happen is that the villagers would select ten virgins that would meet the bridegroom. This is before the ceremony itself. And the bridegroom could come at any time for the wedding. There was no set date. There is no set time. There would not be like we have today. Uh, come to the wedding on March 14th at 6 o'clock at Our Lady of Victory Church. No. All that would be known is that there would be a wedding very shortly. And the time of the wedding would be determined by the bridegroom's arrival. And he would be met by ten virgins carrying their lamps. And they would escort him to her, the bride, so that the wedding would begin. So this gospel is right out of Jesus' time. But what would happen sometimes is that the bridegroom would like to trick the virgins waiting to take him to the bride. The bridegroom would come at midnight just to see if they're ready. Or the bridegroom would come at two in the morning. Or the bridegroom could come at three. Now don't give me chauvinistic stuff. This is just what it was back then. So it will be up to him to determine when the wedding would come. And so he decided to go and come at midnight. Well, five virgins were ready. Their lamps were burning. 
Their lamps were full of oil, and they were ready to escort him. Five foolish ones did not bring supplies, did not bring enough oil for the lamps, and therefore they were not ready. So what happened? The five virgins escorted the bridegroom to the bride for the wedding ceremony, while the five foolish ones were left outside. Because you could not travel night roads without a lamp. You could not travel the roads without light due to safety. And so the five virgins were kept outside of the wedding feast. And so Jesus is using this, this example, this custom that everybody knew and would have been very much aware of to make a point. Are you prepared? For you do not know the day nor the hour that the Son of Man is going to come. He's making that point that we must be prepared. The parable was given to the Jewish nation. They were not prepared. They were not ready to accept Jesus. They were not ready to escort the bridegroom. They were not ready to, to, to embrace the Lord. And so the kingdom of God was given to those who lit their lamps, to the Gentiles, to those who were ready, to those who accepted him, to those who would open their hearts to receive him. And so we use that parable today, which very much alive 2,000 years later, to look into our own hearts, to see truly if we are prepared to meet the Lord. For there are no truer words. We do not know the day, nor the hour, nor the time that the Lord will call us to himself. And because we don't know the day, the hour, nor the time, he says every single day must be a day of preparation, a day of being ready. And so the question for us tonight is, are we ready? Are we prepared? You see, for most of us, probably we say, well, I still have time. I'm not sick. I'm not ill. I still have plenty of years left in my life to take care of things that I know that should be taken care of, but that I will get to eventually. Really? Do you really believe that? that you still have plenty of time, plenty of years to take care of things before we meet the Lord? I don't think so. I don't think so. Heart attacks happen. Car accidents happen. Issues occur. We're not guaranteed the very next breath that we're having. We're not guaranteed that when we walk out these doors, we will wake up tomorrow. I don't mean to put a downer on this. You know, we can watch Penn State football for that. But I don't see, I don't want to put a downer on that, on tonight's celebration. But I want to put a realistic approach to it. Are we ready? Are there things in our life that we truly need to be taken care of so that we don't carry it over to the Lord? Well, some might say, well, well what is it? Well, I'm, 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 I'm trying, trying to, I, there, there's, I, I don't know what, I'm, what, what is it? Well, it's a very simple way of finding out what it is that should be taken care of. Pretend that you got the email from Jesus saying, I am coming tonight for you. What is it that you would take care of? What is it that you would take care of? 
Probably in the church here, the confession line will be from here to the waffle shop if that happened. But what would need to be taken care of? What grudge would we have? To, what anger to take care of? What bitterness to undo? What lack of forgiveness to offer? What change of attitude needs to be done? What unspoken words of love need to be said now? What action needs to be done in our own life, with our family, with our friends? What is it? If we got the email tonight that said, I'm coming for you, you got three hours, what would we do? And it's that that Jesus says we need to prepare. We need to either get rid of, or we need to do something about, or we need to take and do something with it. It's simple. We don't need to sit too long to find out what that might be, or what the list might be. So why not begin now? Why not begin now? My spiritual director said, you know, if you would take care of one issue a year, you could become holy in no time. Well, I'm 65 years and I'm not holy yet. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I need to be taken care of. But just think about that. To work on it, to get rid of it, so that if he does come, we're not caught off guard. That if he does call us unexpectedly, that we would be ready to stand before him and be welcomed into his kingdom that he prepares for us. So tonight, let us not be like the five foolish virgins, not prepared and not ready. Let us understand that our very next breath is not guaranteed. And because of that, what needs to be done in our life should be done today, not tomorrow. Now let us stand and profess our faith in our wonderful God as we say with one voice, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and truth, we bring our needs to our loving God. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide her in holiness and protect her from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic and health care leaders who coordinate responses to the pandemic, May God give them wisdom, strength, and compassion. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those nearing death, may God fill their souls with peace and lead them to seek his mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, mem for members of this faith community, may God graciously help us to use our time and talents for the sake of his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the names written in our register for the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this past year, including the names of our loved ones who have been placed at the shrine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Cal Palazari, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your own private intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of love and mercy, you are our help. Trusting in your compassion, we ask you to hear our petitions, which we offer through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn you found in Miss Lillette's number 470, All is Well with My Soul, number 470. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks. You have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Jesus taught us to call God our Father. As his children, how honored we are to now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes, Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Take a 
This is Jesus, who one day will call us to himself. Blessed are those who are prepared to meet him, and I will share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn can be found in your missalettes, number 587, Christ be our light, number 587. Christ be our light, 
shine in your church gather today many the gifts many the people many the hearts that yearn to belong let us be servants to one another making your kingdom come Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine your church gather today. Let us pray. <laughs> Nourished by the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements. ORV School will be hosting kindergarten open houses on Monday, November 9th, and Wednesday, November 11th. On both days, they'll have two sessions, 5.30 5 to 5.30 p.m. or 5.30 to 6 p.m. Come and meet our teachers, learn about our programs, and see hard on hand what our school is so special. To allow for social distancing, we are asking that you register ahead of time. See the bulletin for more details. Father Jonathan's reflections on the person of Christ, encountering Christ in our lives, the scripture and the church, continue this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the church. It will also be live streamed on Facebook and recorded to view at your convenience. Due to the pandemic this year, we have to make some changes in our parish giving tree project. This year, we're asking parishioners to make monetary donations instead of selecting tags and buying gifts. We have placed envelopes labeled Family Giving Tree at the entrances of the church. You can use these envelopes for your monetary donation and return them to the church. You may also mail your donation listing Giving Tree on the subject line. Please see the bulletin for additional details. There are extra All Souls envelopes in the gathering space available to write the name to your deceased loved ones. These envelopes will be placed at our deceased shrine during the month of November. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth with God's grace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. As Father recesses to greet us as we leave, our closing hymn can be found in the Missalettes, number 442, How Can I Keep From Singing? Thank you.